We just finished an 18 day cruise on the Sapphire Princess and let me tell you, it was our favorite cruise ship so far. We're going to take you on a tour of the whole ship. Make sure you watch to the end because we have two secret spots no one else found. Let's get started. The front part of the ship of Deck 5 is all cabins and staterooms. So we're gonna start here in the art gallery behind the forward elevators. We actually had a room on Deck 5, so we passed through the art gallery many times a day. We really enjoyed getting to see this display of art. They changed it almost every single day, so we were seeing new paintings, new pieces every single day. It was really enjoyable. This is actually coming up one of my favorite pieces right here, the little Picasso fish. Did you know that Picasso made ceramics? I certainly didn't. That was completely news to me. Uh, I've recently picked up doing pottery myself lately, and it just was really interesting to know that this world-renowned painter, which of course I'd heard know a lot about, uh, that he did uh, pottery later in his life. I just have to say that he worked with a master potter to make all of these shapes. Uh, making pottery is not easy, so he had a master potter that would make these shapes, and then he would manipulate the clay, change them into the shapes you see, add some decoration to them, develop the ideas, make it into a Picasso. We also saw a bunch of Peter Max paintings, a bunch of Thomas Kincaid paintings. The art team put together a lot of lectures. They had a lecture almost every single sea day, and we really enjoyed getting to listen to these. Thank you, Sapphire Princess, for introducing us more thoroughly into the art world. Now, coming up here, we have the Piazza. The Piazza is the central hub of the ship. It stretches three decks. On the deck five, the lowest deck of the Piazza, you have a bunch of dining and beverage venues uh, around the ship. Um, we're going to start here with the International Cafe. This was the 24-hour dining venue, so that means that at any time of the day or night, if you were hungry, you could come down here, there would be something for you to eat. Starting at about 11 o'clock in the morning, they would switch this over to the lunch and dinner service. They would have awesome desserts, cakes and pastries and sweet breads and muffins. Uh, here on the left side and on the right side, they would have sandwiches and pot pies and rolls. Uh, they would have soup options, the different soup every single day. Um, always had fresh fruit out. So really delicious food. During the breakfast hours, uh, in the, starting from the early morning until 11 o'clock, they would have pastries and danishes and donuts. They had breakfast burritos and egg sandwiches. On the left side, right next to it, there was a beverage area where you could get fancy coffees and teas and hot chocolate. This was part of your upgraded beverage package if you bought that unlimited drinks package, or you could pay a small charge between two and five dollars if you wanted to get some specialty coffee or tea in the morning. Uh, then coming around the corner here, uh, you have the Good Spirits Bar. Uh, this was one of the bars on the ship. It had a really nice seating area, some couches, some comfortable chairs, tables, so you could gather with friends. I saw a lot of people just sitting here reading a book, enjoying the view out the sea. It was a nice spot, a little bit away from the main traffic pattern of the piazza, but you could still sit here and listen to the live music or listen to whatever event was going on in the piazza just a little bit more quiet, um, not as crowded and busy over here. Now, as we head to the aft of the ship here, you're going to see we come up on Savoy's main dining room. This is one of five dining rooms on the Sapphire Princess. All of the dining rooms have the same menu. The decor is different, but the menu is exactly the same every single night. So it's up to you if you want to eat in the same dining room every night, have the same servers, uh, have the same dining time, or if you want to change it up, move around a little bit, uh, maybe just choose when you're hungry and go to eat. You can decide that's one of the specialties on Sapphire Princess is to have the dine my way option, which means you aren't stuck into uh, just an early or late dining time. You can choose when you're hungry and when you want to eat. Now here is the midship elevator bank. You can see there are six elevators here. And yet sometimes it still took forever to get an elevator, but that's just cruise life, right? Here is a front view of the Piazza. You can see the two panoramic elevator banks. It was always fun if we lucked into getting those when we were traveling on the elevator here at the midship area. Um, just a really beautiful setting. Love the decor in the Piazza. It was ornate without being overdone and just a really fun place to be. Really enjoyed listening to the music around here.
Now heading over to the starboard side and going aft again, we see the Vivaldi dining room. Uh, like I said, this is another one of the dining rooms. This is mirroring the Savoy, so it's just exactly in reverse, all the same number of tables, the same layouts, the same menu, uh, just a little bit different decor on this one. And now we're coming up to Vine's Wine Bar. This is where you can sit if you want to get some specialty wine. Uh, we're not big wine drinkers, but we often saw couples here sipping some wine. They also had an Ocean Terrace lunch that Sapphire recently started offering. I believe it was just on sea days. It wasn't every single day. Uh, it was a sushi menu that was part of their casual dining offering. So if you had that upgraded package, you could get this as one of your casual dining offerings. Otherwise, you could pay $14.99 per person. You would get a selection of sushi dishes as well as a dessert to have a little bit nicer lunch rather than going to the buffet. And over here we have Alfredo's. Again, it's another one of the casualty dining venues. You've probably heard of Alfredo's. It's famous for being the best pizza on the sea. Um, I would agree it was very good. We did try this one night. We actually ended up getting the a la carte and just ordering one pizza. We took it back to our room. They packed it up in a takeout box and we just went back and enjoyed it in the piece of our room, which was really nice. I will say for some reason, they gave us a hard time about that. They really were very insistent that they wanted us to sit in the dining venue. On that particular day, the dining venue was almost full. It's very crowded. We wanted to have a little bit more privacy, a little bit more quietness. So we had to push back and say, no, please, we want to have the takeout. We've seen other people doing this. And eventually they did give in. Not really sure why they put up such a fight initially, but I would highly recommend doing the takeout pizza. It's just kind of fun. Who thinks of getting takeout pizza on a cruise ship? All right, before we head up to deck six, we're gonna take one last look at the Piazza here. Uh, you can see they've got the Pictionary game set up today. So they're about to play some Pictionary. Um, we saw a giant Connect Four set up here once. There was a beanbag toss and a golf putting challenge. Uh, on the formal night, they had a champagne tower and um, an officer's dance. So there was a lot of activities that went on. But now we will head up to deck six. And you can see this overlooks the piazza. It's a great place to watch if you want to see some of the live music and there's not a chair below. It's, uh, it's a really good view up here on this, at the second level of piazza on deck six. So we will stroll back to the forward section of the ship and go through the Grand Casino here. Now we're not gamblers, so we did not frequent the casino. The only time we were in here was actually during our muster drill. It was our check-in station. Uh, but a lot of folks really enjoyed this. Um, they had some activities going on in the casino, like group slot pulls and stuff. So if you're into gambling, um, lots of stuff going on and you're sure to have a fun time. Next up on the starboard side here, we have a kind of a joint office. There's a library, the future cruise sales, and the princess captain circle. So first you'll see the future cruise sales here. Of course, princess hopes you're enjoying yourself on the cruise and they really hope that you will book another cruise because the only thing better than one cruise is two or three or four cruises. So they make it super easy. They've always got folks here that are ready to help you sign up for your next cruise. Um, on the wall here, you can see they've got brochures about their different itineraries. So uh, if you are interested, uh, you can get some good deals going if you book on the cruise. So definitely check that out if you are interested. Um, here you can see the library. It's a nice quiet place to sit. Not a lot of people come back here, so it stays really quiet. The books are mostly just books left behind by other passengers. It's kind of a give one, take one library. Uh, but if you run out of a book, it's a nice place to stop and grab another. And then the captain's circle, of course, is where you sign up for your perks. If you've been cruising on Princess for a while, you can get some good upgrades. Uh, so definitely do that. If you haven't already signed up for the captain's circle, highly recommend it. All right, we will keep going towards the forward section of the ship, and the next stop is going to be the Princess Theater. Uh, so first up, there's a little lounge area in front of the Princess Theater, um, and that is a, a great place if you're waiting to meet people before you go in. You know, 
don't save seats, guys. Get your whole party together. Go into the theater together. Sit down together. Don't be that person that has two people with 10 empty seats between you trying to save an entire row. Um, just get yourself together and all go in together. Um, and you can see why. As we come up here right now, there's actually a destination lecture going on and they were super popular. It was always a packed house. So you'll see as we go around the corner here, um, there were a few empty seats for sure, but I don't know if there was even two seats together. They were all just singles most of the time when we went here. If you want to listen in on the um, some of the lectures anyways live, you need to get there at least 10 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes early. A good tip though, if you are interested in watching at least the destination lectures, is you can watch these from your stateroom TV in the comfort of your own stateroom without having to worry about grabbing a seat or showing up early. So you wouldn't have a chance to ask questions in the moment, but you could at least still get the information. And that was a really convenient thing for us because um, we could also rewind if we missed something and I could take notes to make sure I remembered all the exact spots we wanted to visit. Okay, now just behind the Princess Theater, there is the Churchill Lounge. So this is the smoking lounge. Uh, we're not smokers, so we didn't spend any time in this, but there was a really comfortable seating area. There was a bar. There's that really that smoking lounge atmosphere going on here. Um, some sports TV, uh, just kind of a place to hang out if you enjoy smoking either cigarettes or a cigar or pipes. Um, I believe everything was welcome here. There is another place to smoke outside on up on deck 14. We'll show you that later. But this is the indoors smoking lounge. You know, the one thing I will say is I never caught a whiff of smoke not a whiff of tobacco while we were going by this the churchill lounge area they keep the doors really well sealed so it's a nice place for smokers to go and it's also nice for non-smokers that if they don't like that smell it doesn't go anywhere okay heading out of the churchill lounge we are going to head towards the aft of the ship and we're going to go on to the port side this time take a swing by the forward elevators first and then as we head over to the port side you'll see coming up here is the shore excursions desk so if you haven't already booked a shore excursion and you would like to book one that's through the cruise line, so through Princess Cruises, maybe you have a question about your tickets or you want to change one of the shore excursions you did, the folks back here are always happy to help. And then we'll just take a quick peek here, going back towards the forward side of the ship, going back towards the forward end of the ship again. This is the lounge area on the other side of the Princess Theater. So you can see they have mirrored lounges on both sides, just a place for you to wait. Maybe you don't want to watch the show. Um, maybe, like I said, you're doing the good thing and waiting for your whole party to arrive before you go grab your seats. Um, regardless, there's a, a nice uh, lounge area for you there. And now we're gonna head through the Grand Casino again. This is on the, the port side that we're walking through this time. You can see lots of slot machines. I think coming up here, we've got a craps table. Just lots of games and ways to test your luck. You're already pretty lucky you're on a cruise ship, right? All right, now here on the starboard side of the piazza again, we have some more shops. This one coming up here, this one is Essence. It is the perfume shop, so lots of different scents in there.
And now we will head around and take a quick peek at the dining area, but we'll, we're actually going to come back to that in just a second and go through this area here. This is the midship elevator bank on deck six. Um, you can see there's a nice place to overlook the piazza. I think our Pictionary game is still going on. We'll take a look here. We were cruising during December, so the boat was all decked out in holiday uh, decorations here. You've got the garlands and the lights and some really pretty Christmas trees. I thought it was really tastefully done. It was a nice nod towards Christmas without being just overly gaudy. I really I thought that brought a little bit more Christmas spirit. It's, it's hard to remember it's Christmas time when there's no snow and uh, palm trees and a, a tropical feeling to the air. All right, and here is the store on the starboard side. I'm not sure if this one actually had a name. It was kind of the up, upscale clothing store. They had coach bags and guests and uh, other name brands. They sold sunglasses and belts and some accessories, some purses. And the clothing was actually pretty good quality clothing. I picked up a shirt here myself, so. And now we're gonna head over to guest services. So this is on deck six, just in front of the piazza. Um, you can see there's only one group in line, but it's fully staffed. Um, there really was never any waiting. We did have to ask a few questions. So we were up here a couple of times and we never had to wait more than a couple of minutes. The person that helped us was always very friendly and competent. Uh, they were able to resolve our problem right away. No fears about the long lines. I always hear people talking about and strategizing when's the best time to go to guest services. We didn't have any problem like that. We never had to strategize. We just went when we need to. All right, now we're gonna head towards the aft of the ship and catch a glimpse of the dining rooms back here. On the starboard side, you have the Pacific Moon dining room. This one has an Asian theme. Uh, I think there was like a kimono on the wall and um, some crane paintings. This is where we had our favorite meal. We got a really good table. It was a round table, uh, excluded from everywhere else. Wasn't We weren't elbow to elbow with another couple. Uh, we had our own space and that's what we prefer when we dine. Uh, we've actually had a challenge on cruise ships, getting tables that are a little bit more secluded and away from everyone. And I don't know who wants to sit next to a strange couple. They don't know that they're not you know, actively making conversation with it. I think it's uncomfortable for everyone. So I'm not really sure why cruise ships do this. I feel like they, they could space things out a bit more if they tried. If you have a tip on how to get a good table, uh, leave a comment below because seriously, I think that's what we struggle with the most on cruise ships. You can see here we're being seated at this nice secluded uh, round table. Yeah, I realize it's still in the front of the dining hall, but it's not right next to anybody. We have room to have our own space, our own conversation. That was really nice. And here is the Santa Fe dining room. It is the mirror image on deck six on the starboard side. Uh, it has more of a Southwest uh, decor to it, some American Indian type pottery. I, I like the decoration in this one the best, I think. All right, before we head up to deck seven, we're gonna take you one more place and that is the international dining room. 
So the International Dining Room is the fifth dining room on Princess Cruises, and it's really geared towards larger parties. They have bigger tables here. So if you are in a big group, you can come down here. And also if you are looking to meet other people, you can come down here and say, just sit me with anyone and you will be in a table with a few other groups. You'll get a chance to meet some new people, have some interesting conversations. So if that's something you enjoy doing on cruise ships, then head on down to the International Dining Room. But how do you reach the International Dining Room? Well, it's a bit tricky. It's on deck six, but you can't reach it from the rest of deck six on the ship. You have to head up to deck seven and go all the way back to the aft elevator, then go back down to deck six and you'll find the international dining room just behind the aft elevator. All right, now we're ready to head up to deck seven. So deck seven is the promenade deck. And for those of you that are cruising, you know that means that you can get outside here. But first we are gonna walk around the piazza section on deck seven. So this is the third floor of the piazza. And up here, there are some more shops. Uh, right here you have facets. This is where you can buy watches. And right next door, we have Meridian Bay, where you can buy jewelry. Meridian Bay is Sapphire Princess's jewelry store. Now outside of these stores, you can see there are some people they are watching the action down below in the piazza. There's also a table set up out here. This is where they have their daily specials. It seemed like they had some sort of special going on every day of our cruise, and they would display uh, just a various um, selection of goods here. Sometimes it would be watches, sometimes it would be the jewelry. Um, right now it's hats and I think stuff themed with South America. So yeah, if you're looking for a special right there on those tables is where they set that up. And now coming over here, this is the Crooner's Bar. Uh, Crooner's Bar is a, it's, it's a nice area. We didn't spend a ton of time here, but it is a, a cool place to sit. It's, it takes up a long section of the ship. So it's this long, kind of narrow, but long, bar lounge area. It's got nice seating uh, and it, during the day you can actually listen to the live music going on in the piazza below but in the evenings you can see there is a grand piano in the back corner there and starting around five o'clock uh, a piano player will come up and he's there until 10 or 11 o'clock at night possibly later I'm not sure I don't I don't know if we ever actually made it past 11 o'clock on the cruise here He'll provide live music and it's just a nice quiet place to sit and grab a post-dinner drink with friends and watch what's going on around the ship. Coming up here, we have the Explorer's Lounge on the right-hand side and outside, just outside of the Explorer's Lounge, there's this nice seating area with these pretty big couches. It's a really good area. We saw a lot of groups gathering here. I think that a lot of people use this as a staging area to meet up with their group at the end of the day and decide what they're going to do for dinner. A lot of people playing games here uh, in the late afternoons. So that area was really nice. And then here we have the Explorer's Lounge. There's a bar section here and then the Explorer's Lounge. It was often used for art events. So right now you can see they're hosting an art auction. Um, so. We'll get back to that. We'll see a little bit more of that later. So we are heading towards the aft of the ship. And this is the starboard side here. And we're coming up on Oceanfront. So on Princess Cruises, you use a medallion to 
get into your room to pay for items. Some ships use a key card, but Princess Cruises uses a medallion. And Oceanfront is where you can get help with that medallion, get help with the app that links to that medallion, and buy accessories like lanyards or watches or necklaces to hold the medallion. And this is the Internet Cafe. So here you can bring your own computer or you can use one of the computers on Tapfire Princess. They provide a few computers for those people that didn't bring their own. And you can work on your computer, you can uh, access the internet. Now you can't access the internet for free. You do need to buy the Wi-Fi package. If you didn't bring your own computer, you can use a computer here, or you can just have a nice workstation. They actually even had a cafe area here that looked like they sometimes might offer beverages or maybe even food. Uh, we actually never saw this in use, but the potential is there. I'm not sure if it just wasn't open the times of day that we came or if it was possibly closed during our sailing. Regardless, this is the internet cafe here. You can see those are the computers there that the uh, Princess Cruises provides. And now continuing aft, we have the photo gallery. So if you've ever been on a cruise, you know that photographers are everywhere. It is free to have them take your picture. It is not free to buy those pictures. So if you see something you like, there is a fee for that. So if you just want to have some fun and get your picture taken, there's plenty of photographers that would be happy to do that. If you don't like to have your picture taken, then by all means, just say no thanks. They aren't super pushy, which I appreciate. And here we have Sabatini's. The full name is Sabatini's Italian Trattoria, and it is the fancy upscale dining aboard Sapphire Princess. We never ate here. I think the charge was 50 or maybe 55 per person, and we just decided to save our money on this one. Um, but it sounded like the food was pretty good, and as I mentioned before, the seating in the main dining room can be really crowded. One of the things you're paying for at Sabatini's is getting a little bit more space. They have more space between the tables there. It's a, a more private experience. So if you're looking for something a bit special, definitely give that a try. Got some more of the photo gallery here. You know, I have to say Sapphire Princess really did a good job on the photo shoots. I saw a lot of nice backdrops and um, just a lot more thoughtfulness going into the photography than I've seen on some of the other uh, cruise ships, so. And here we have bingo sales. We are approaching Club Fusion right now, and many afternoons they would have bingo in Club Fusion. So if you are a bingo fan, uh, they have enthusiastic bingo announcers um, on the Sapphire Princess. They also, in Club Fusion, during the mornings, they would have Zumba. Uh, I never quite geared myself up to doing Zumba. It really looked like a fun thing. And uh, it was tempting, but I didn't quite make it there. And then in the afternoons, they would also do dance classes. It would be like every two or three days, they would have a different dance class. And we did walk through one time when they were hosting a dance lesson. We're both musicians, but we're not dancers. Uh, we've got a sense of rhythm, but that sense of rhythm does not transfer to our feet. So uh, we, we don't dance. Uh, but it is really fun to watch, and everybody looked like they were having a great time. So Club Fusion is where some of the more social activities happen here. And now we've kind of turned around, circled. The Club Fusion is the last, the most aft room on Deck 7. So we've circled through that. Now we're heading back forward. And this hallway that's just in front of Club Fusion, these plaques are pretty interesting. They are all plaques of where Sapphire Princess has cruised before. So it was fun to look through these, uh, recognize some of the ports we'd been to, 
see some ports that we've been to on other ships and some places that we've been not cruising but just in our travels it's just really neat to see how many different places sapphire princess has cruised in on her during her sailing history and now we're going to continue uh, towards the forward end of the ship so we're gonna go back the way we came along the starboard side. You can't actually walk along the inside of the ship all the way on the port side. Uh, you can if you go outside, but uh, on the inside, the port side is interrupted by the different clubs and lounges that they have. So the only continuous stretch is on the starboard side. So you just saw we just passed the photo gallery again. Um, here comes the uh, ocean front kiosk stand for help with your medallion and we're gonna go back through that explorer's lounge and take a little bit closer look at the art auction we really enjoyed the art events here on sapphire princess they had uh, a lot of art lectures as well and that just really brought a lot to our cruise it was a fun thing something we didn't expect but something that we really enjoyed and there is Matt right there. So I just want to give a shout out to Matt. He was one of the people on the art team. Great guy, uh, really made our cruise more fun. So um, hi to Matt there. So a lot of mornings, the art auction or the art lecture was going on. In the afternoons, they would have other smaller events going on here. They did Spanish lessons because we were doing a South American cruise. Uh, in the evenings, they would have a house band playing on stage and there is actually a ballroom floor uh, towards the front that you will see in just a second here. And there'd be a lot of people dancing, depending on the song. It could get pretty crowded on the dance floor. A lot of people enjoyed dancing up there. So that was kind of neat. We also enjoyed the seating here. So they have really comfortable chairs and nice couches. So a lot of the lounges don't have the couches. It's just chairs and tables. Uh, this, for listening to the lectures, just sitting back on, on the couch and watching the lecture was really enjoyable. It was a nice way to spend our late mornings. keep heading towards the forward end of the ship again. We're coming up here on the midship bank of elevators. On the left hand side we'll swing by and look at that picture with the captain and crew here. Just kind of putting some names and faces together from some of the people we see around the ship. And this is Crooner's Bar coming up from the other direction. And this is the Piazza. And now right here actually is one of the spots that they have a photo shoot set up uh, every formal night they had. So like I said, Princess does a really good job with the photography. If that's something you're into, definitely take advantage of that. I don't particularly like getting my picture taken all the time, but if you do like those formal portraits, I thought Princess really did a great job with them. And now coming up here, this is Calypso Cove. This is the general store aboard Princess. So we're on deck seven on the starboard side, Calypso Cove. And you can buy, if you run out of soap or toothpaste or shampoo, uh, you can buy all those things if you need more chocolate because, you know, who doesn't need more chocolate? Come on. Uh, they also sell some shirts and jackets here. I personally thought the clothing items in the store on Deck 6 were a better quality, but the stuff here wasn't too bad. Just a little bit more basic.
This was, you know, it was an easy place to stop and you can just pay for everything with your medallion. So it's really easy just to grab something that you need if, if you have forgotten something or run out of something, like I said. And now continuing forward, uh, we're coming up here on the wheelhouse bar and this area outside is the there's just a seating area but it's kind of connected to the wheelhouse bar so if you sit down there the waiters in the wheelhouse bar will actually come out and make sure that you have everything you need see if you'd like a drink or anything and this is the one place that uh we sat there only three times on the cruise but there was a waiter that came out and remembered us every time and I, I thought that was kind of nice it was just cool that he recognized us i wasn't expecting that since this wasn't somewhere that we frequented that much uh inside here there are nice seating arrangements with uh, tables and chairs and sofas they push everything together really tightly and the chairs are super heavy so when you sit down you you've got to move it away from the table a bit and they're a bit hard to move it's my one complaint otherwise this place was nice it's another lounge area that has a stage for live music and a ballroom floor here uh, one of the times we came there was actually uh, the violin duet that we enjoyed listening to was playing and they started a song, I don't remember which song it was, but suddenly everybody got up and got onto the ballroom floor without talking to each other and just, they all agreed like they were, they were all going to do the same dance. And they started doing this line dance. Everybody knew the moves to, it was like it was coordinated, but nobody said anything. It was the coolest thing. I don't know if it was one of the dances they learned at Club Fusion. Uh, that was just a really unique experience. And uh, I, at that point, I wished I could have joined in with the line dance. Now coming up here, this is the Princess Theater from another viewpoint. This is the top level of the Princess Theater. And I believe the destination lecture is still going on. You can see that there's still a pretty packed house in there. And we'll just take you on a quick walk outside. We won't do the whole deck, but here is the promenade deck from the outside. Uh, you can walk all the way around the ship. It, if you do walk completely around the ship, one lap is one third of a mile. You do actually have to walk up and down some stairs when you do that, and that's when you are walking around the bow of the ship. And they do close that section off in the evening, so if you want to circumnavigate the ship, make sure that you do that before sunset. Speaking of sunsets, if you want to catch a great sunset, I think there's nothing more spectacular than a sunset off the bow of the boat. We caught some amazing views there, and uh, that was a really special part of our cruise as well. Well, we're going to skip decks 8 through 12 because they are all just staterooms. And deck 13, well, Sapphire Princess doesn't have a deck 13, so we're going to head up to deck 14 now. Deck 14 is the Lido deck, and that means pools. Sapphire Princess has a lot of pools, four swimming pools and six hot tubs. If you like water activities, you're going to be set. But you know what? We have been walking for a long time and I'm getting hungry. Are you hungry? Let's go to the buffet. The buffet is called Horizon Court on Sapphire Princess and they have a good variety of food. They always have fresh fruit out. They've always got salad out. Even during breakfast time, they'll have a salad selection. Uh, during lunch and dinner, they always have two different types of soups going. And this is dinner right now. You can see they've got a really nice variety of food. Um, a few different forms of potato, a few different types of main meat dishes. The breaded shrimp was awesome. They've got uh, foods from every cuisine. Uh, they, had, they always had Indian food, some sort of Indian dish, which I really enjoyed. And then, of course, they have a dessert selection. The food was honestly pretty good at the buffet, with the exception of the dessert. Honestly, if you want a good dessert, I would recommend heading down to International Cafe on Deck 5. For whatever reason, the dessert there was always way better than whatever they offered in the buffet. Even when it looked like it was the same thing, it was always better at the International Cafe. And they, they often had a different selection, so uh, that's the place to go for desserts. But for everything else, uh, you could find what you're looking for here at Horizon Court. 
So the buffet here on Sapphire Princess is set up a, a little bit different. There's actually two halves of the buffet and the rooms don't just interconnect. There's a few spots where they connect, but they're for the most part, they're separate. And that allows the staff to switch out the meal service. So that way they can always have the buffet going. Basically it opened at like seven in the morning and didn't close until uh, I want to say 10 at night. Now here we, we just popped out a little bit to look on the, the outside decks. This is actually deck 16 overlooking deck. There's this cascading effect. It overlooks deck 15 and deck 14. You can see the, the pools down there. And all the way down on deck 14, that is where you can eat outside from the buffet. But then the other two decks, 15 and 16, both have lounge chairs. This whole area was kind of interconnected. You've got Oasis Bar here on deck 16, and then down right outside of the buffet on deck 14, you had Outriggers Bar. So if you're looking for a drink, you can get one on either deck. Um, here on deck 16, there's a shuffleboard court, classic cruise game. There were a couple of shuffleboard competitions going on while we were on our sailing. But we will head back inside now and continue our deck 14 tour. So here we are outside of the buffet. We're going to start heading forward. And the first thing we pass is a bar. This is the a Calypso bar. So it's the bar that kind of services the pool area. The, this pool is called the Calypso Reef and Pool. And we'll see that we'll turn around here in just a second. And the, the Calypso Reef and Pool is the indoor pool. So it's covered in this area called the conservatory. That helps keep the temperature a little bit more constant. It cuts down. There's no breeze from the ship, uh, either because of the weather or because the ship is moving quickly. Of course, if the ship is moving quickly or you've got a little bit of weather going, you are going to get effects in the, the waves in the pool. You can, right now, I believe we were moving pretty quickly at 14 knots and that, that definitely made the water start moving back and forth. Uh, it was a, a fun swimming environment. Hadn't experienced anything quite like that before, so. This pool, there, there are two larger pools on Sapphire Princess, the Calypso and then the next one we're going to see, the Neptune pool. Uh, they're big enough to swim laps. Um, if you enjoy doing swimming as an exercise, you can definitely get some exercise in this pool. They're not just sitting around pools. And we saw lots of people swimming laps in these pools. Uh, but the nice thing was they were never super crowded. It, you could always time it so you could find a chance to enjoy the pool in the comfort of having some space, not necessarily empty like it is right now, but it was never like packed where you felt like you couldn't move around at all. And there's also, there's two hot tubs here you can see, and there's, there's enough hot tubs scattered around the ship that you can always find a hot tub that you can not have a ton of people in as well. Um, like I said, not necessarily always going to get it to yourself, but frequently we did. So that's one nice thing I really enjoyed on Sapphire Princess. So you saw we just climbed up the stairs here to get a nice overview of the Calypso pool. Um, so that was technically we were on deck 15 for a bit there, but we're going to head back down and continue on deck 14. And we will keep going to the forward end of the ship. We're going to go on the starboard side here. and we're gonna go past the, the Swirls Ice Cream Bar. So here you can get the premium desserts of Sapphire Princess. Princess Cruises has this, this premium dessert line of, you know, honestly way too much sugar than you probably need, but yeah, you're cruising, so why don't you do it up on your vacation? The, also here at the Swirls Ice Cream Bar, during the mornings, there's a juice bar. I didn't realize they even had this until about halfway through our cruise. But it's really popular. I saw a lot of people coming up here for breakfast. You can get fresh squeezed orange juice and pineapple juice and like green juices, you know, the kale and whatever. So if you like that kind of a healthier start to your morning, you don't necessarily want the coffee, but you want some juice, <laughs> then this is the place to go. Yeah, so you stand here if you want the premium desserts. 
And if you just want some ice cream, some soft serve ice cream or a, a scoop of ice cream in a bowl, you come around to the corner, you come around the corner here and uh, you can get that ice cream here. There's almost always somebody standing in line. One secret that a lot of people don't realize is they actually offer popcorn here as well during movie nights. So starting around 7.30 at night, they fill up a tray full of bags of popcorn. You can come and take as many bags as you want. Once it's gone though, it's gone. They don't pop more. So it's usually gone by 8.30, but it's nice to just get a chance to come and, and snack on some popcorn. You, If you don't want to watch the movie here, you can always take the popcorn back to your room. There's no problem with that. That's kind of fun to have popcorn and movie. And there is the giant movie screen. Sapphire Princess doesn't have an indoor movie theater. If you want to watch a movie on a giant screen, then you'll be watching it outside here. But when they do the movie night, they bring out better cushions for the lounge chairs and blankets. So they're going to make sure you're really comfortable. And we saw a lot of people enjoying these movie nights. Uh, we decided to watch movies in our stateroom. They have a nice selection on the stateroom TV and it's just more comfortable in my opinion. But if you do like watching movies on a big screen and having that more social uh, interaction, this is the place to do it. And now this is Neptune's reef and pool, by the way. And we're going to go up the stairs again to deck 15 so we can get a nice overview of the Neptune reef and pool. This is the other large pool that they have on Sapphire Princess. Like I said, it, it's big enough again to do swim laps in, although we didn't see as many people swimming laps here. This was more of a social pool. It's open to the sun, so a lot of people sun tanning around here and just kind of lounging around the pool and cooling off in the pool. Um, not as much lap swimming going on. Uh, it was pretty cold today, so there's not very many people out today, but on the nice days, this area was more crowded. A lot of people hanging out here. And of course, there is a bar to go with the pool up here on deck. Uh, this is deck 15, like I said, so the bar here is called the Mermaid's Tail Bar. There is also a bar you'll see down below, so you don't even have to climb the stairs if you want to drink. Got a cute little dolphin there. Another view of that nice big movie screen. And now we'll head back down to deck 14 and catch the last bit here. So the very forward part of deck 14 is all staterooms. But there is one more little bit we haven't seen in the more public areas, and that is the dining venues right here. On the starboard side, we have Trident Grill. And Trident Grill served up burgers and hot dogs and chicken sandwiches and pulled pork sandwiches. And those were all pretty good, honestly. The burgers were great, although they did have this weird marmalade stuff that they would put on the burger, and I would recommend saying no to that. I, I didn't really care for that. A, a burger shouldn't have marmalade on it, I don't think. That's my opinion. Uh, but they also had tacos here, and the tacos were terrible, so don't get the tacos. And you could get fries. I, I think they pretty much always gave you fries unless you said you didn't want it, um, but you could also ask for fries with cheese on it or the loaded fries which with fries with cheese and bacon. And like I said, it was cold that day, and uh, I think she was dressed up as a penguin because she was so cold. <laughs> I, I, I'm not really sure what they're going to do when they get to Antarctica. That's where this cruise was headed, and everybody was already pulling on their parkas. All right, so this is the Mermaid's Tail bar, and I think I misspoke just a little bit ago. The Deck 15 bar is the Trade Winds bar, 
and the deck 14 bar is the mermaid's tail bar. And now here on the port side we have the Prego's Pizzeria and they always had three different types of pizzas out and that pizza they kept it really hot and it was so popular there was usually a fresh pizza coming right out of the oven and the other two they kept under the heat lamps um, but they always had margarita pepperoni and veggie every single day and then they always have a daily special so like today it was four cheese uh, they also had pineapple and ham they had meat lovers they had the princess pizza which was sausage and hot peppers uh, so it was a nice variety and the pizza was really good i, I think i like this pizza the best of any cruise ship we've been on um, and it Princess is renowned for having the best pizza at sea. I believe that's one of their trademarks. Okay, now we're gonna head back towards the aft end of the ship again. And we're gonna walk along the starboard side here. So you can see there is more seating over here, tables and chairs against the window, and then the loungers facing the pool. So when it was nice, this area was really, really popular. And it's also where they hosted all the pool games. They, and they had some different activities here. A lot of party themed things and loud music going on. So if you, again, if you like that, that social scene and that party scene, this is the pool to hang out at. The pool in the conservatory is generally a, a bit quieter. And here they had a changing display of towel animals. Every morning I would see somebody out here folding different shapes with their towels, which I always thought was fun. Unfortunately, our stateroom attendant never gave us any towel animals in our room. Uh, it seems like they just concentrate on putting them on display and not handing them out to every single room anymore, but they're still fun to see. Okay, we're gonna head up to the forward end of the ship on the upper deck. So we're gonna look at deck 15, 16, and 17 all together here. This area you can only get to kind of as a unit. And we're gonna start in the Lotus pool here and take you around this area. and of show you how you can get from one area, one level to the next. So the Lotus Pool is at the very forward end of the ship. It's a little bit smaller of a pool. It's not quite as deep. And it's just a kind of quiet spot to lounge around and enjoy some quiet time in the pool. It's an adults only section, which wasn't a problem on our ship because there weren't a lot of kids. But if you are looking for a quiet spot that kids aren't allowed, um, that would be the Lotus Pool. And there are two hot tubs back here as well. So. Just a more quiet, secluded spot. It has kind of a um, Asian-themed uh, art motif going on here, and just a really peaceful area. And this is in the center of the forward section, and then kind of surrounding it, we've got the fitness area here. So you've got a lot of different things going on in the fitness area. There's weights and aerobic machines, of course the treadmills, um, stretching areas. I'm always impressed with how much stuff they can fit into the fitness areas here on the ship. There's all the machinery is in this room and then the room that we're going to go into next is the, they actually have uh, the cycling class there so they have the bike machines but then it's mostly just a big expanse of floor that you can use for stretching classes and this is where the specialty classes took place. So they did have a specialty class pretty much every morning, specialty fitness class. The funny thing is sometimes it was free and sometimes there was a charge for it. it there didn't seem to be any rhyme or reason into when it was and it wasn't always at the same time. I didn't really understand that. I decided not to, to go to any of the fitness classes here. You can preview the classes on your stateroom uh, on your stateroom TV under the exponential feature and I just they didn't appeal to me so I didn't ever go to any of them like I said sometimes they're free and sometimes they're not and I'm not really sure why one or the other but now we're gonna walk back through the spa area 
So here you have the hairdresser and the makeup area. As you can see some folks are making use of that. And then this is another way to access the Lotus pool and back to, through this hallway, which we're not going to go down, but that is the sauna area. And that is uh, also free and included in the ship. So you can go to the sauna in the steam room if you want. Um, on the other side, which again, we didn't go down on the tour here, but there's massage rooms as well. Those aren't free, but you can book a massage here, of course. And the spa people here are always more than happy to help you out. Maybe honestly, a little bit aggressively show. So the most aggressive salespeople on the ship are always in the spa. I, you probably know that if you've cruised before. So now going outside of the spa area, we're going to circle the front, the forward part of the ship, the bow of the ship here. And this is going along the outside of the fitness room on the starboard side right now. It's a nice walkway. This is not technically the running path. It doesn't make a full circumnavigation of the ship. There's a lot of barriers in the way and it doesn't, doesn't go all the way from one end of the ship to the other. But if you just want to stroll a short distance around the ship, this is a good spot. Um, this is also uh, an area, we were around this area when we saw a whale, a pot of whales go by once. And that was really exciting. We could see their, their um, spouts of water and just caught a glimpse of the back of a couple of them. But that was, that was really exciting and unexpected. So you can see, uh, as we're coming up here, there's an observation deck. And I didn't even realize until watching the footage of our ship tour, this observation deck is directly on top of the command center of where the officers are when they're steering the boat. And from a different angle on the ship, you can see a little into the command center. And I didn't even realize that, that we're just directly on top of it. That's what this observation deck is. And we would see there was a group of bird watchers that we would see set up their equipment. And a lot of times they were at the bow of the ship, but you can see today a couple of them are here at the, sorry, a lot of times they were at the stern of the ship, the back end of the ship, but you can see today the, a couple of them are set up at the bow here looking forward and checking out uh, what kind of wildlife they can see. This looks like a really nice area, but it's the windiest section on the ship. So I think that's why there's never a lot of people up here, even though the view is great. I mean, you can see the, the coastline there. Um, I believe that's the coastline of Peru. And now we will head back around the other side of the fitness center. Going towards the aft of the ship. We're on this, we're on the port side now. There is something just mesmerizing watching the waves go by. It's really peaceful. Okay, so here we are on deck 15. The, this is the outside smoking area. So if you're a smoker, you can go to the port side of the ship forward on deck 15. This is right next to the Trade Winds Bar. So you might recognize the Trade Winds Bar. We had popped up here for a short bit while we were touring deck 14 just a bit ago. Now here it is again. We'll take a walk by as we do our deck 15 forward section of the ship tour.
So there you can see the stairs there, and that is gonna, we're gonna take those stairs up and check out the area that's actually above the fitness center and the spa, get another view of that forward section. So this is gonna be deck 16 and 17. So here we are now on deck 16. This is uh, above the spa, and it's just an open sun, I believe they call it a sun deck. People didn't go here very frequently. It was a very secluded spot, of uh, kind of a hidden spot. Um, I actually really enjoyed this area. I spent a lot of time here in the mornings. Hardly anybody came here. I really enjoyed that, getting some peace and quiet and just getting to watch the views, get my morning started nicely and just really relaxing. There was, you know, like, a hundred lounge chairs and three people using them at any given time. I felt bad for the guy that had to pull the lounge chairs out because it just, just seemed like a, a, a never-ending task that never was really appreciated. And right here you can see just a glimpse. There's actually another level of this. It's, it's not a very big level, but technically deck 17 and they call that the star deck or the observation deck. And you can go all the way up there and you're the highest you can be on the ship. Um, it was really, really windy there pretty much all the time. So I hardly ever saw anybody go up there. Just, I couldn't believe how windy it was. I, I didn't know it would get that windy on the ship. But now here we are, this is the forward section on deck 16. This is the sanctuary. So the sanctuary is a paid area. It overlooks the lotus pool, which is not a paid area. You can use that lotus pool whenever you want, as long as you're an adult, no kids. But the sanctuary is an area that is kind of exclusive. You can either buy a full day or a half day pass. And uh, we saw some people using this area. Uh, it certainly was, I mean, they technically have a limit as to how many people they'll let in. That was never a problem on our ship. They're, they never got close to capacity here. Uh, the, the loungers are nicer, they're better padding. You have dedicated service, so there, there was two or three wait staff that were always back here ready to get you whatever you wanted. Um, they had these nice round chairs, they had a few of those nice round lounge chairs. Um, and then they had uh, a massage area here, which I think you had to book through the spa, but you didn't have to go down to the spa to get your massage. You could have them come up here to you. So you could technically never leave this area if you wanted to pay for that exclusive either half day or, or whole day pass here. You did have probably the best view on the ship. Great view of, of where we're going but the windows, the glass would really cut down on the wind, so it cruise in style. They also had uh, some special snacks just for the sanctuary people. I'm not sure what it was, but uh, we passed a, a food tray that was only for sanctuary folks. Take one last look at the lotus pool, nice overview of the lotus pool here. And now we'll head back to where we were on deck 15, right outside the Trade Winds bar. And we'll keep walking towards the aft end of the ship. It's an overlook of the Neptune pool and bar, and you can see the movie screen. Got some nice sun loungers.
corner here, we'll get to the upper level entry of the conservatory. So the conservatory is the covered area on the Sapphire Princess with the Calypso pool. Now, the first time you see this, you're not really sure if these doors are meant to be opened or not. Um, and they were a tri bit tricky to open. They're, they're like really, really wide doors and there's a bit of a suction because of the wind trying to open those doors, but just push push a little bit and they will open up and then you can get inside the conservatory inside area where there's more lounge chairs and again there's ping pong and foosball up here. So we'll take a bit closer look at that. We were, we were here once before when we were doing the tour of deck 14, but now we'll take a closer look up here. You will see there is a fierce ping pong game going on. These guys were really good. We tried playing a few times and it was, uh, you know, a couple of things and a couple of pongs and then uh, running to find the ball. Fortunately, Sapphire Princess realizes that that's going to be the case and they had a nice supply of ping pong balls. So you, you didn't have to look too hard for them. We actually saw a guy picking them up uh, at the end of the night and he had this automated ping pong ball picking up machine, which was pretty funny. Wish I would have gotten that on film. Okay, we will go back outside here. And we'll keep heading to the aft end of the ship, the back end of the ship here. another cruise boat in the distance. I don't think we could figure out what that one was. So the interesting thing is, of course, as you're cruising along, one side in a situation like this, one side of the ship is going to be very sunny and the other side will be in the shade. And so in this case, uh, that was the port side. The port side that we're walking on right now is in the shade. The starboard side, which we is where we entered the conservatory from. We saw a lot of people sunning themselves on the starboard side, but almost nobody on the port side because it's in the shade right now. And so I believe those stairs go up to that area that you had seen a little earlier in the video with the shuffleboard, but we're going to actually go in this door and see where it takes us. Okay, so here we are on deck 15 and this is the kids area. So you have the beach house here. This is for teenagers age 13 through 17. And this is actually the aft elevator bank. So you can get here from a lower floor and just take the aft elevator bank. But otherwise, if you're on deck 15, it doesn't completely interconnect. So you need to walk along the outside of the ship to get here. Um, now here, this is the lodge for ages 8 through 12. And we'll take a look at the tree house here. This is for the youngest kids, age 3 through 7. So on our sailing, there are actually only 10 kids on board. So they just combined all the kids into one room. And on this particular day, they were, they were hanging out in the tree house 
there wasn't anybody in the other rooms. So here the staff member is going to let us take a peek at the lodge and see what's going on here. There you can see the uh, outdoor area I was talking about. And you can even get a glimpse. There's a pool there, which I'm not entirely sure how they got there. I couldn't quite figure that out, but it's called the Splash Pool. It is uh, listed as a pool and not a hot tub, even though it's it's just like a giant hot tub um, as far as the size goes. And it's for the kids, so it's not as deep and it's not as large. And so it's something that the kids can still go and get in the pool, but not worry about them getting hurt at all. And there's actually one more room in this kid area, and that is the uh, Camp Discovery family. So this is where families can come. You don't have to ask permission. It's not staffed by the, uh, by the crew staff. It's just a kind of a play area that you can come with your kids. And also, if you're an adult, you can just come here. And so they've got a foosball table, they've got an air hockey table, and they've got ski ball machines. Kind of an arcade feeling going on. It, we tried the ski ball and the air hockey. It was, it was kind of fun to do that. Um, they also had puzzles and games. And for some reason, they had monitors and no uh, computers and no keyboards. I'm not sure what that was all about. They also have a TV and sound system in here. Uh, there was some other folks that were already here that kind of had set up things the way they wanted to enjoy them and we didn't want to intrude too much. So, But if you are looking to hang out as a family and have some entertainment options as well, that is somewhere you can go all together. And it's not like age restricted, so whatever age of kids you have, you can go there. Next up, we have a really cool place, the Skywalker's Nightclub. Now, this is kind of a signature feature on the Princess ships, and you'll see what I mean when we get there, but first we have to get there, and it's a little bit tricky. So we went up to the Deck 16 elevators here. These are the aft Deck 16 elevators. Um, this is another place that doesn't interconnect throughout the ship, so you do need to make sure you're at the aft elevators if you want to go there. And then you find that there's actually these elevators that aren't even marked on the map or you can take the escalators up. But this is the entrance to the Skywalker's nightclub. And the club itself is actually two decks up on deck 18. This is a little confusing because on the maps you'll find online, it says that it's on deck 17. But on the map that you get through the Princess Cruise app, it says deck 18. So you are actually on deck 18 when you go up to the Skywalker's nightclub. It is almost the highest point in the ship. You can see this has a really cool disco fusion type of feel. I just it, just really love the vibe they're giving. Um, these cool, I don't know if they're actually black lights, but this kind of fluorescent color. And now we are up here on the Deck 18 Skywalker's Nightclub. and you'll see this place is really cool. It's got a super neat view. So this area, it's, it's really wide and it has these slanting windows that look uh, out over the water. And it's, uh, it goes out over the edge of the ship on both sides. So if you want, you can sit on the far port or starboard side and have a really nice view out into the ocean. You're elevated above everything. You can actually, because it sticks out, other side of the ship. You can actually see down the length of the ship a little bit. 
Um, they have a similar area at the front of the ship, at the bow of the ship, and that's where the officers keep watch. So it's not open to the public. It's not open to the passengers at the bow. But here at the aft end of the ship, they have turned this area into a nightclub. And also just during the day, a place that you can go and hang out, lots of comfortable seating. And like I said, an amazing view. I believe you can actually reserve this area if you want to have a private event like a birthday party or anniversary celebration or uh, you know a meeting of some club that a lot of you have come on the cruise ship. We came up here once and it seemed like there was a, a bunch of people that had a space reserved. It wasn't a problem for us to come in. The event was almost over, but uh, it seemed like this was a place you could reserve if you did want to have a more private setting with lots of space. So now we're going to go outside from the Skywalker's Lounge and we are actually now taking you to the highest place you can get on the ship. And that is the center court or the sports court. So to get there, you better not be afraid of stairs because there's no elevators and you have to take a lot of stairs. So you can see from the Skywalker's Lounge, you actually go down uh, like a half a flight of stairs and then you go back up two flights of stairs. So maybe it was a full flight you went down. I don't know how they count it. Again, this on the map online, it's going to show you as deck 17. But when you look on your Princess Cruise map on the Princess app, it says it's deck 19. So this is even higher up than the observation deck that you have at the front of the ship. The observation deck is technically deck 17. The other way to get here, if you don't go through the Skywalker's Lounge, you can get here from the Oasis area on deck 16. That's the area that had the shuffleboard courts. So you can see there's a staircase that goes all the way up from deck 16. So then you would be climbing three flights of stairs and completely warmed up for whatever sports activity you want to do up here. Right now they have pickleball set up. Um, they have the basketball courts that you can do, and it, it looked like they had some soccer goal post that they could bring in and have soccer, although I did never see that marked on the activities. You know, it's a nice view up here too, but because it's so high up and, and exposed, even though they have that glass perimeter around, it's really quite windy and You'd be more comfortable if you're looking for a good view, you're gonna be more comfortable in Skywalker's nightclub. But if you want to get some activity in, play some group sports, uh, this is definitely the place to go. And because it's so hard to get here, I don't think that there's a uh, high demand for the courts. Um, I think that you're probably gonna be able to get some time on here if you want. Well, that was the sports court, but you know, maybe pickleball isn't your thing. Maybe you're looking for something else. You're in luck because we're going to show you one of the secret spots on Sapphire Princess that we found. So if you remember back when we were on deck 15, the sun deck, if you looked behind the movie screen, there was a staircase and that staircase took you to the lawn court. The lawn court is Sapphire Princess's putting green. They've got golf clubs and golf balls, and we spent a couple of afternoons here, very peaceful and quiet. Uh, not a lot of people came here because I don't think a lot of people realized it was here. For our final stop on the Sapphire Princess tour, we are going to take you to the most hidden bar on the ship. This is the staircase that is at the back corner of Club Fusion on deck seven. And if you take this staircase down, you will find the Wake View Bar. Now, when we were sailing, this bar was actually closed, so they didn't have a bartender, they didn't have alcohol down here, but it wasn't off limits. You could come down here and sit, you could come appreciate the view. It just wasn't listed anywhere except for the map that you would find in the app. That's the only way we knew about it. And when we asked somebody, they actually were really puzzled as to why we wouldn't want to come here because he said the bar was closed. But it's a very quiet place to sit. Since it's not listed on the schedule anywhere, nobody's found it. And you have some nice couches, a really cool view through these portholes. And we'll leave you at that, the wake of Sapphire Princess. 
Hey, you made it all the way to the end of this video. That means you liked it. So why not hit that like button? Why not hit that subscribe button? We're gonna be talking about our experience in Santiago, Chile pretty soon. We're gonna be going to Brazil. We're gonna be going to Peru. We're gonna be doing more cruises. We're gonna be making great videos. Hit that like and subscribe and hopefully we will see you soon.